But it's not only blue state Democrats who find themselves at odds with their constituents or with primary voters. Case in point, right-wing Democrats Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. So a new effort is taking shape to exploit that divergence and apply pressure. Some of AOC's former top aides and Justice Dems founders have announced an effort to recruit primary challengers to run against Manchin in West Virginia and Kirsten Cinema in Arizona as a direct response to their resistance to abolishing the filibuster. Now, there are a few things that are really interesting about this direction. First of all, they're going after incumbents in red states and rejecting this totally BS notion that people like Manchin are reflecting their constituents when they block populist economic policies. Former AOC aide Shoykat Chakrabadi told Politico, we sort of have this theory that the voters in Arizona and the voters in West Virginia would care more about action. They care more about jobs in their community and money in their pockets than they do about an arcane Senate rule called the filibuster. Hmm, interesting take. The other thing that's interesting is that they aren't looking for candidates who are uniformly left wing, but instead are focused on recruits who are populist and will vote to get rid of the filibuster in order to reduce Senate gridlock. There's some reason to believe that this group is going to find success, too. They already helped to pressure Manchin to move on direct stimulus checks after he had told The Washington Post absolutely not when asked if he supported the payments. The counterexample, of course, is Biden. He hasn't felt any political pressure in terms of a threat to his agenda or in terms of facing a primary challenge from the left himself. So he's felt free to play footsie with the right and ignore completely the demands of progressives. That's why he had a two-hour meeting with Republicans at the White House over their laughable COVID plan and didn't even bother to respond to a letter from progressives pushing for $2,000 monthly checks. That's why he's already said he would negotiate with right-wingers like Manchin to further means test the direct payments and has shown zero willingness to cancel student debt, as progressives, of course, have been asking. This is really not complicated whatsoever. Politicians are cynical actors. If you want them to move, you've got to have a credible threat. Well, the Democratic Party has already landed on their midterm messaging to help Democrats hold on to their slim majority in the House. Are they focused on relief checks or health care or climate or... Any of the many issues Americans repeatedly tell pollsters that they care the most about? Nope. Instead, apparently, they're focused on QAnon. (laughs) It seems that they have already forgotten the lesson of Georgia, which is the incredible power of actually promising to do something for people's lives. Of course, given that they've already proven themselves incapable of keeping those promises, might make it pretty tough to run on that kind of thing again. Instead, predictably, they have embraced a narrative that lets every entrenched corporate interest and economic royalist off the hook, whilst also sowing fear amongst the public that their neighbors represent the gravest of threats to their future. Look, folks, we have a lot of big problems in this country, from Gilded Age inequality to Spanish flu-level pandemic to just outrageous levels of mass despair. But if you read mainstream outlets or watch cable today, you might well become convinced that the single greatest threat to the nation is actually a nonsense conspiracy theory believed by the rabble that by all appearances is actually losing support by the day. Instead of the many societal ills that have led so many to be taken in by this nonsense to start with. But with the QAnon and Marjorie Taylor Greene obsession, you see all the worst instincts of the political establishment. It's a tried and true playbook. Seize on the culture war, demonize your opponents, play on the battleground of civility and decorum rather than policy and material benefits, and then act shocked in the end when voters don't flock to your cause.